Binance says it will liquidate its entire position in the FTX token, which of course is used by its competitor, FTX. Joining us with more is Yahoo Finance's David Hollerith. And David, this is part of Binance's um, exit from FTX. But what's the impact likely to be on users? Yeah, Akiko, um, you know, right now, as of the announcement that uh, Binance's CEO, uh, CZ, made yesterday, uh, the token FTT, which is sort of the crypto exchange token for rival crypto exchange FTX, has sagged about 5.6%, uh, which is, you know, not very substantial. It is a smaller, it's about a $4 billion market cap token. So, uh, you know, we're not seeing a huge impact there. Um but uh, the larger uh, situation is that uh, Binance's CEO has come out as saying that um, there's some sort of risk surrounding the token and it's due to recent revelations, which is sort of cryptic. Now, Binance won't offer any more comments beyond what CZ has said over Twitter. And he's he said a, a fair amount um, about the FTT token, uh, but there's a lot of speculation around what he's saying and what he means. Um, the, the the recent revelations, as far as we know, um, the, the most obvious thing is a coin uh, desk report that came out last week, which found that Alameda Research, which is sort of the sister trading firm to FTX, held about three point six billion dollars. Uh, worth of FTT tokens on its balance sheet. And that's not just a high amount of uh, of the total assets on Alameda's uh, balance sheet. It also is, um, you know, it, it's a the majority, about 71% of um, FTX's, or sorry, FTT, the FTT token's total market cap supply right now. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a lot we can sort of glean of as to uh, what, uh, uh, CZ means in this, and uh, it might have to do with the fact that he's expressing, uh, uh, you know, insolvency concerns, things like that. Um, there's really not a lot of evidence we have, even from the CoinDesk report, of um, how much of Alameda's balance sheet we were looking at or, or that CoinDesk got for the report. So we have so many missing pieces right now. Uh, you know, this is quite speculative. Yeah. I will point out that Alameda's um, CEO, Caroline Ellison, actually offered to buy the tokens from uh, Binance at a below market price yesterday. Um, and since then, you know, there's obviously just been uh, growing speculation around this. And, and, you know, the issue is if we think about back to May, uh, the stablecoin Terra USD, um, you know, it, uh, there, there was concerns around uh, that cryptocurrency, which ultimately um, blew up. And that was a lot of that was sparked by a bank run. And so any kind of conversation about um, insolvency here is obviously it fans fears in the market, especially in, in the bear situation we're in now. And David, in other uh, crypto news, we're hearing that BlockFi is bringing back its yield product. This is something that they took off the market after a settlement with the SEC. So what's actually changed since then? Right. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe we can think of this sort of as like new Coke for BlockFi's crypto earning uh, uh, accounts. Um, so it, technically, it is a new product. Um, it's a. Uh, it, it's importantly, it's approved. Uh, only for accredited investors in the U.S., which is about 3% of U.S. households based on uh, data from the SEC. Um, and uh, sort of the context here is that uh, the SEC uh, and BlockFi settled a $100 million, um, $100 million uh, uh, sort of claim uh, against the company for issuing uh, what the SEC recognized as a security through its crypto interest products, um, and BlockFi has not did not acknowledge uh, that it agreed, but it did agree to pay the fine and pull the offering from the shelf for all U.S. investors. Um, now that uh, the company is rolling back this offering, it, it's interesting in that since then we've seen uh, two of BlockFi's largest competitors, Voyager Digital um, and Celsius Network, both. Um, declare bankruptcy while uh, BlockFi has taken an emergency $400 million in credit line from, well, FTX. Um, so uh, this is all playing out, but the crypto lending uh, business is clearly not dead and that the company is still offering this. And it's it's actually uh, has has a you know fairly robust uh, seeming business outside of the US. So time will tell there, but obviously the big uh, 
elephant in the room here is regulation and, and whether or not um, BlockFi will be able to issue a uh, crypto interest bearing account, which is obviously much higher risk than something like a normal savings bank account um, back to just the U.S. general investing public. So a lot to watch there. Yeah, a very familiar product, but, but potentially with a lot more scrutiny attached to it. Yahoo Finance's David Hollerer, thanks so much for that.